Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 29th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It's something a little bit different today, no diary, but instead a little video talking about SQL injection, how to prevent it in Python. SQL injection, not a new topic at all. And actually, I had a diary a couple of years ago, I think, about uh, this little uh, Python issue. But I thought given all the SQL injection vulnerabilities we had recently and the CISA's announcement about getting rid of SQL injection, maybe good to revisit some of these issues and well, uh, maybe get in the mode of doing a couple more videos here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Let me know if there is a particular topic that you're interested in. Well, but today I don't have a SQL injection vulnerability, instead an OS command injection vulnerability. And this is one that I already mentioned. It's in Fortinet 40 Seam. And uh, we now have a proof of concept and additional details from Horizon 3. Quick summary here is it's trivial to exploit and uh, the vulnerability actually is extremely similar to a vulnerability they patched last year down to the point where it's in a particular API call where it's basically just the next parameter. There's a server IP address. That was the parameter that was vulnerable last year. Well, uh, this time it was the mount point, which is the second parameter to this particular API call. And it's pretty much just a case of missing input validation, but actually maybe that may make a good uh, video for later in the week to talk a little bit about OS command injection and how to prevent some of these vulnerabilities because they're very common in these kind of appliances. And Kaspersky came across some ransomware that actually takes advantage of BitLocker. I've seen this a couple times in the past, but I'm surprised we don't see it more often given that BitLocker is a common component in Windows and is usually considered uh, benign, so excluded from any kind of anti-malware when it all for a sudden goes out and starts encrypting your files. The attacker does create a random passphrase, uses it to encrypt the system, then deletes it and forces a reboot. Probably the biggest advantage here to the attacker is there is no great way to display a ransom message to the user. Instead, the volume of the the drive, the volume label is just changed to the attacker's email address. So the victim would first have to discover this, which of course, particularly when you're talking less sophisticated victims and such, uh, this uh, may actually be missed. And then we got a couple more proof of concept vulnerabilities of note. One is for a vulnerability in the glibc function icon. This function is uh, used to convert international characters. So international conversion is kind of what it's uh, short for. And the vulnerability is particularly exploitable via PHP. But your best option is just update glibc and updates have been out for a while now. And if you need more motivation to apply the latest Apple updates, there is a proof of concept exploit for a vulnerability that Apple patched on May 13 with macOS Sonoma 14.5. This is a privilege escalation vulnerability in the UDF, the universal disk format driver. And uh, yes, uh, the proof of concept exploit is out. The researcher who published uh, this uh, particular uh, exploit uh, Wang Lei uh, did also publish a number of other vulnerabilities. I'm just going uh, to also uh, link uh, to uh, this researcher's uh, X uh, profile so you see some of the other proof of concept exploits that were recently uh, published uh, by them. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for letting all your friends and enemies know about this podcast. So talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.